Well, welcome everybody. I'm Brian Julius. I'm the Chief Content Officer for Enterprise DNA. And with me today, I've got Enterprise DNA expert, Greg Phillips. Welcome, Greg. Hi. And for those of you who've, who've been with us for a while, you know Greg probably most, um, most directly from his work with best practices. Um, for the past year plus, he's been cataloging and um, creating videos that walk you through best practices. Um, we've got blog entries that he's done. Um, he's really kind of advanced our thinking on what best practices are in each of the pillars. And what he's done now is taken all of that information and thinking and experience and put that into a single course. And so I wanted, wanted to talk with Greg today a bit about that course. And um, this is now the, the third week of the end of year content countdown. We're rolling out a new course every week. So this is, I believe, the 15th course that we'll be rolling out this year. So um, welcome, Greg. And um, wanted to just start with just kind of talking with you about kind of how you came to this to this topic in this place, you know, that um, what got you interested in the, the, the concept of best practices and kind of started you along the road to um, developing all the content on best practices that you've you've done over the past year. Well, to avoid um, quoting myself through the, uh, the first uh, minute or two of each of the YouTube videos that I published on best practices, um, I really found that when I was learning Power BI, uh, there was so much material out there that it was impossible for me to keep everything uh, together. So I started making my own notes, uh, first in Word and then eventually in OneNote um, to try and... Um, get a handle on all of the items that I wanted to remember each time I did some development and um, it became overwhelming all of those notes so I thought partially for my own benefit and also because I might be able to, to provide something of interest to others and so on to uh, record a few videos with uh, select um, select best practices that I had uh, sorry select pra practices that I had found really useful for each of the four pillars of Power BI development. So it was partially for myself. Uh, one of the things that I always remember is one of the best ways to remember something is to teach it to somebody else. Yes, so um, I'll have to say that uh, probably the incentive for this was as much for me as it was for anyone else. Um, but, uh, in any event, uh, I had this YouTube content out, out there uh, we did five videos for uh, January through May of earlier this year. And this course is a repackaging of that content uh, alongside a walkthrough where I go through uh, the checklist um, listing all of, I think there's 62 of the best practices that are in all of the various um, modules there. And then we'll go through uh, an effort to build an application from the start and exercise each one. Great. So really seeing seeing it in action kind of in the way you think about it as you're designing your own reports. A little bit. Part, part of it was illustrating um, the best practices. So it, it, that was kind of the goal. Um, so I won't say it's a peer development effort. That was more of a, well, let's do a development with uh, the, uh, I think it was the enterprise DNA practice data set. Mm -hmm. and see what we can apply, uh, where we can apply each of the, the uh, actually, no, it wasn't the practice data set. Um, I created a single flat file uh, from the AdventureWorks database um, because I thought it might be similar to what people would get when they were often starting Power BI report from scratch. So it was a single flat table. Um, actually, from a relational database, I generated a SQL query to generate a flat table mm -hmm. and then started from there. So it was relational. I derelationalized it. That's not the right word, but in any event. Um, and then we uh, linked it back up in Power BI. And you're, you're saying, and I, I totally agree with this, that um, you know some of the best way to learn is by teaching. And I've definitely found that to be true in the accelerator, even even teaching some of the, the basic concepts, you know, in going through, you learn things, you learn things, you're putting those materials together. And so I'm wondering if you can talk about maybe some of the things as you've gone through this process that you yourself have learned or kind of emphasized, re-emphasized in 
you know, your own development as a, as a result of putting this all together? I think um, to try and keep moving forward all the time, it's not necessary to do everything perfectly every time. Um, for example, when I'm putting titles in uh, to visuals and stuff, I often put asterisks at the beginning so it stands out or I put them in with a red color or something like that to make it stand out so that I know that it's not right. Uh, one of the things I've started to do uh, very often uh, in the last little while is I put shadows around everything because they're big and glaring. And I realized that when a visual has a shadow, that means I got more work to do to clean it up. So um, I'm not overwhelming myself with the necess with the requirement to get everything perfect each time mm -hmm. I'm doing it, but rather I'll, I'll, I'll start and keep moving forward and I'll come back to it and iterate again and again and again. Um, so in that sense, I guess the walkthrough in the course perhaps is not really reflective of my development effort uh, that the walkthrough is a bit more linear, mm -hmm. I guess to show a particular technique than a, an actual development effort. But uh, it's still, I found it quite useful. And I hope that others will as well. Yeah, I think, I think the feedback we've gotten is, you know, that just in general, you know, people really like the mix of the theoretical and the applied, you know, so talking about something best practice and concept and then seeing it play out in an actual example is, is exactly the, the type of thing we've, we've heard from people that they're looking for. So I'm wondering um, who would you, who would you say this course is, is kind of best geared to, you know, kind of what level, what level of power BI capability would you say is kind of the right time to, to jump into this course? I think a lot of the, the content can be useful to anybody. Um, probably it would be uh, uh, an intermediate developer or someone that has, uh, I don't know, I don't even know time frames, but let's say someone that has a number of months under their belt. Um, it's, it shouldn't, hopefully a lot of these things are not uh, new concepts to people that have been developing for a bit. Um, hopefully they're probably, or sorry, not hopefully, probably they are already doing a lot of these things. Um, and for advanced developers, uh, they're probably doing most of the, or all of them or have discounted uh, some of them quickly already. So uh, it may not be very useful for advanced users. So I would say probably intermediate users or people that have um, begun their Power BI journey and are looking to uh, incorporate um, a little bit of structure into their development. And, and I, I would, I guess I would disagree with one, one of the statements, which is, I do think, you know, I mean, to the extent I would consider myself an advanced user, um, I actually found a lot in there that was to me, good food for thought. And just, you know, it wasn't like there were major revelations of things I'd never seen, but in terms of a lot of your, your specific suggestions, you know, one of the things I really like is the use of the general pane and kind of putting yes. everything on a, on a 10 pixel scale and just how much easier it makes to align your, your visuals and your titles. You know, that, that was one that, that, you know, jumped out at me. I think your naming of variables is one kind of the, the standard way you do that. So I think, you know, even, even some quite experienced users are going to find some nice, nice tips in there that are going to refine their, their technique and style in development. Uh, that would be wonderful. That would be, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to share some of those things. Uh, just following on on what you said, I'm a big, um, I, I just love the format pane, love the, sorry, the general section of the format pane. Uh, it's so easy uh, to set things and it's actually a lot faster for me to develop. I don't have to worry about pixel sizes and stuff like that. I, I know that uh, it's very easy to remember, for example, oh, this is going to be in the second column. And I know the second column starts at, at X equals 350. So that's perfect. I remember that uh, as you're developing and so on, when you've got many, many visuals on a page, there's a few pieces of information like that that uh, stick to your head, mm. um, stick in your head that make uh, development even faster. So 
So I like that very much. And so what, what would you hope at the end of, at the end of the course that people will have learned or what skills do you hope they will have developed? Well, one of the things that um, has always been part of my uh, consulting environment is that I have to pick up work that others have started and I have to leave work that others will continue. Um, sometimes that other is myself six months or a year or two years down the road. Um, and it can sometimes be quite an effort to um, figure out what the design uh, intent was for certain things. So I, uh, above all, strive for clarity, make it simple, make it easy, make it clear. As you're saying, variable names, make them long, make them explicit so that you can really easily understand what they are. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, just so that it's easier to pick up and work on something. And so on, I, uh, had some, uh, when I was managing a development group years ago, Actually, uh, one of the comments I made to the developers was, if you don't comment your work, if no one can understand how it works, then you own it. You'll always be maintaining it. If you want to work on new stuff, you need to leave your old stuff in a way that somebody else can pick it up and work on it. And I have taken that to heart myself. You know, and I've definitely seen that in your work that in the, in the, in the, um, the challenge entries. You know, when I've taken a look at your, the PBIX files, um, they're really well organized. They're, they're easy to, easy to decode what you've done, how you've done it. You know, your measures are, are well commented. Everything's, you know, organized into folders. It, it, it really reflects kind of an orderly, repeatable process, you know, that each one kind of bears, there, there's definitely kind of a, a Greg report that I can, I can look at and, and see those, see those, you know, those, those, those marks that, that indicate that repeatable process. Well, in all fairness, it, it comes back to my engineering education and so on. That, uh, that's kind of where it all started because uh, somebody has to review all your calculations. So you've got to make all your calculations in a way that somebody else can understand them. So well, Greg, thanks. Yeah, I, I really, I, is there anything else you wanted to add about the course or? Just that I was surprised the length of time that it took me to, uh, to go through the walkthrough um, as we were uh, talking about this course and envisaging the walkthrough and so on. It didn't occur to me that it would take as much time uh, to do a walkthrough as it did. And I was actually surprised by the fact that uh, the first three pillars went really quickly. And the fourth pillar for reports and development took a long, long time. So over half of the walkthrough is in the reports and development. I, I wasn't expecting that. I kind of figured it would be 25% um, for each one of the four pillars. And I crank them out. And uh, it took a lot more effort for the fourth pillar. Mm, um, perhaps that was just because there's more discussion and more items available. But uh, in any event, I was a little surprised by that, but I think it's a good thing. I'm glad I went through it. Yeah. And I think, I think that that walkthrough is, is definitely a great addition to the, the kind of the catalog of best practice information that you've been pulling together over the, the past year. So really want to thank you for, for taking the time and the effort to put that together. I think this is going to be a real kind of foundational cornerstone course that we refer back to and direct people you know new users to all the time so really uh really eager to get this one out and get in people's hands and get feedback on you know kind of how they're employing these these practices in their own report yeah well, i appreciate the opportunity thanks so much greg all right Talk thanks brian hey everyone thanks for tuning in to enterprise dna tv if you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. 
Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.